Hi, Jeff Cote here with another installment of Boating Tech Talk. And this time we are going to do an unboxing. Uh, we're doing an unboxing and what I'm holding in front of my hands right now is an Airmar DST810 depth speed temp. That's what the DST stands for. And this is a transducer. Airmar is a company that makes sensors. Uh, all the manufacturers use them. It doesn't matter. It could be Garmin, it could be Raymarine, it could be Simrad, it could be Furuno. Airmar is a sensor company and uh, their products are used by all manufacturers. So um, having a temperature or depth speed temp transducer is pretty common, right? We've been having that on boats for decades. Uh, I have one on my sailboat and uh, I installed it on my boat even prior to starting this business in 2007 and um, it's been working fine. Now, why would you consider a new transducer, or if you're changing a broken transducer, why would you consider this transducer right here? Well, first of all, uh, this transducer, what it's kind of neat is it actually refreshes the depth at five times per second. So that's pretty quick, right? So that's the, the frequency is going five times per second measuring the depth. So that's pretty neat. Um, it's pretty useful also to have temp. You know, I use temp on my boat to know when it's time to swim, when it's time not to swim. I uh, know how bad it's going to feel if I want to go and uh, maybe scrub the hull, right? So I use temperature to, you know, gauge of how inviting the water will be. Uh, obviously, fishermen um, will use that for also knowing sort of what's happening with the water and what they're going to do. Uh, I'm not into that, so I don't know, but I use uh, temperature for knowing when it's time to swim or what it's going to feel like if I fall into the water. Uh, speed is also really useful. Uh, all of us are going to have a GPS, or most of us will, right? Uh, GPS is going to give you what's called speed on ground, and that's useful, but uh, remember that there's something to be said about speed on water. So speed on water is going to come from that, and we'll talk about that as well. All right. Uh, the other thing that's interesting about this device is it also gives you a sort of a boat attitude sensor, meaning it gives you both the heel and the trim of the boat. So that's going to be actually really useful for uh, power boats and sailboats. Um, you can actually even use the cast app from Airmar uh, to calibrate your speed through the water, which is really good, regardless of the display that's there. So that's another big uh, win. You can monitor via Bluetooth live what's going on. So that, I mean, that's pretty neat. So you can actually have an app that's connected to this device. And um, you can do the, all the calibration doesn't have to happen in the display, like I said before. So all those are sort of win, 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 win. This is a pretty cool uh, device and we will do the unboxing. All right, Airmar is sort of no frills. You can see the box from the outside, it's cardboard. Uh, that's what they all look like, but don't let the exterior of the box fool you. There is a lot to be excited about. By the way, this is brand new. We just ordered it. This is literally my first time opening this box. So we're going to be doing this together. All right. So um, a little bit of packaging as you would expect, right, to protect. Um, but there's not going to be much here because, again, it's a transducer. This plugs into uh, a display. Uh, this does not include the display. This is just, it's like having an ear, right? Uh, this is what's going to be both sending out an echo and listening to that echo. All right. So first of all, you notice uh, the cable is uh, well coiled and you can see it's an NMEA 2000 cable and you can see that by the pin assignments. These five pins right here uh, are going to be allow you to interconnect to an NMEA 2000. Long cable length, which is good. And the reason is because most of our transducers are not beside the chart plotter right or the instrument so we need to run from you know somewhere on the hall bring it up all right next you can actually see this looks very much like the old ones um we've had most of us if you've had a sailboat and you have remarine instruments on board it's very likely that you have something very similar on your boat you can see on one side here which is kind of neat um you can see the paddle wheel so it's half temp uh, depth and the other side is a spiel paddle wheel. You can see that there's an O-ring uh, right here um, and this would allow you to lock. And the other big important thing, notice the arrow. I can't tell you how many boats I've been on where, um, and we've even made the error. You know what, we all learn. So don't be shy of learning on your own boat. We all do, even my techs make errors. Everybody makes errors. Uh, but the trick is make sure that that arrow uh, is pointed in the right direction on your boat, okay? So this is pretty neat and 
now look at this. What's interesting about this is you can actually have an insert go in. So you're actually not, most through hauls are mounted from a hole on the boat and you go from outside in. This one here is you would actually install the sleeve on the outside and you can actually plug this one from the inside. And it's important to do this because with a speed paddle wheel, the challenge is we get a lot, a lot of marine growth. So depending on obviously the salinity, the temperature of your water and everything else and where you are in the world, there are different places that have a lot faster marine growth. And so the instructions in these manuals will say to actually remove this transducer when not in use so that the speed transducer, the paddle wheel, doesn't get uh, full of marine growth. And if you ignore that, at one point it's so scrunched up and even if you try to remove it, the, this wheel's got to flow like easily. If it doesn't, it has too much resistance. It's really going to skew the results of your speed. All right, next thing here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to be opening, and you can see actually right now, this is in a sealed bag. Um, and we've got both the sleeve for the outside and also the blank. So, all right. Let me show you what the sleeve looks like. <clears throat> so this is actually what would be mounted on the outside of your boat. So you would drill a hole of this diameter and you would actually literally put this from the outside. So it would actually be put on the inside. So the pressure of the water would actually force it up, right? So that's why this is fit in the outside in versus inside out. The other thing too that comes with it is a little gasket that's going to be really important and that's going to go on the inside of the hull. You're going to have bedding here and follow the instructions. Always, always follow the instructions. There's nothing more frustrating than putting a transducer in your boat, relaunching your boat, and we know how expensive that is, and then seeing a leak. And by the way, if you're putting a transducer on your boat, you're going to want to check for leaks, you know, every, you know, the first five minutes, then 30 minutes, then maybe an hour, then maybe three hours, then maybe six hours, then 12 hours later, constantly looking for a leak. You don't want to put a transducer in your boat that's going to cause your boat to sink. So you got to, you got to worry and it's okay to worry because you do it at the beginning. And once you've done it for a day or two, then you don't have to worry again. Now notice actually, this is kind of neat. There's actually a sort of a, what I'd call a tongue inside. And what happens is when the water is gushing back inside of your boat, it actually catches this tongue and slows the water flow inside the boat, right? Because we're putting through hauls one feet, two feet, three feet, four feet, five feet below the water line. And as we're bringing that through haul lower and lower, the pressure is pretty significant, right? So to slow down as you're changing these transducers, right? And this is the sleeve that goes in. As you're putting this in to stop this flow, you're gonna want that tongue to basically, I'll show it right here, to be like that, right? And it sews the flow completely. So this would be mounted on the boat uh, as a through haul. And notice the last little bit here, we've got more. We've got another O-ring in the box. And notice we had one as well coming with the DST-810. And this is the locking uh, mechanism that goes on the inside of the hull, right? So this goes on the outside and this comes in and this goes like that. And then what you would end up doing is you would actually bring this locking nut all the way down. And again, follow the instructions for the bedding compound, uh, really important, but that's basically what it is. So when this really expensive DSC 810 is removed so that you don't get marine growth, right? You're gonna actually replace it with this blank sleeve. This sleeve goes in, and then that way, whatever marine growth happens on here, you don't care. So anybody that cares about speed, right, um, is going to want to make sure that they remove their transducer away uh, outside of the water because otherwise it's going to, you know, you're going to lose it eventually. And then the last thing is more instructions, obviously, in here. And then a further O-ring as well. And this O-ring is for this little joint right here uh, for the sleeve. So this comes with everything you need. Um, really cool. I'm actually, to be honest, uh, when I heard about this product, I asked one of our colleagues to order in right away because I couldn't wait to put it on my boat. So this is actually the transducer that I'm going to install on my own boat. So for all of you for watching, thanks. And uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching this uh, PYS video. If you've got further questions, please ask it below or contact us on our contact form on our website. 
I'm happy to donate my time to share information with you. You can support us in keeping our channel ad-free by purchasing some merch on our store or making a donation through PayPal. And don't forget to subscribe. Thanks again for watching.